I'm Paul, the friendly reviewer with Final Cut Pro X on the 2016 MacBook Pro after one month of daily use. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can see more just like it. Also check out the description below for any updates or links that I talk about in the video. Now at the end of 2016 I decided to upgrade my Windows machine that was running Sony Vegas Studio to the brand new 2016 MacBook Pro with Final Cut Pro X. Now originally I really wanted the 13 inch MacBook Pro for the small size, so compact and lightweight, but reality sunk in and I needed the screen real estate and the processing power. So the 15 inch MacBook Pro that I ordered has the lowest i7 processor, has the highest graphics card available, as well as a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. Now I received it through uh, shipping and came to my front door and I was able to get it set up in one evening, install Final Cut Pro, and I was able to post my very first video on this YouTube channel the next day. So very quick, easy setup, so I like that. Now let's talk about the screen first. The screen, the 15 inch screen, is big enough for Final Cut Pro. You can get in there, you can add all the layers, access all the features. I will say that if you get too many layers or tracks, you'll find that you'll want to go to an external monitor as well and it is handy, but I'd say it's not required. For most all of my videos, I've just used this, the screen on the MacBook Pro. Now as far as quality, it's great. The resolution on it's great, the color quality is great, and really I just have no complaints about it. Up next is the speakers. These speakers are awesome. Typically I'd have to use some sort of headphones or something else if I was using a laptop to mix my sounds or do the audio editing to make sure it comes out good. These things are great and I don't need to do that. There's not really a great way for me to show you how good it is, but they are very good. It does have a 720p webcam, which is functional but a little grainy. I don't use it personally. It also has a built-in microphone, which is functional. I've used it on a couple videos, but it doesn't really compare to when I switch over to my professional level audio recording equipment. So as far as battery life goes, expect about three to five hours and not the 10 hours that they state in the specifications. The 10 hours is closer to what you'll get if you're just browsing the internet or doing word processing. If you're doing intensive processing on Final Cut Pro, you have apps open in the background, that three to five hour range is probably what you're gonna get. Now the good news is, is when it gets down to 10%, I can get up to 100% charging it in about one hour. So I'm really not near an outlet very long, so this is nice so I can be on the couch or wherever and it really hasn't bothered me so far. Another feature that's on here is the LED touch bar. There's two different variants of the display that I use. One is some shortcuts for the timeline, and the other is just to be able to zoom and see the timeline. I don't really use this that much. I prefer the shortcut keys on the keyboard and the trackpad. The trackpad itself is very nice with the large size. It's responsive and I'm able to get the precision I need to drag everything around and align things that I need. And I say my favorite feature actually is on the timeline is how responsive it is when I zoom and use the two finger to slide it around and get to where I need to go on it. So this works very well. As far as the solid state drive on there, I have the 512 gigabyte like I said earlier. It's full now after one month, I'm gonna have to offload uh, different uh, content off onto an external drive, which is what I expected to do because I'm doing a lot of video work. And right now the 512 gigabyte is just the best value, and that's just how it is. As far as processing power and performance, I haven't had it get bogged down on me. My videos are up to about 10 minutes long at maximum. I don't know what happens if you go beyond there. I haven't had a reason to. Everything's very responsive, and the preview screen looks great, so really no issues there. As far as rendering times, I have a lot of different features running. So green screen, um, color LUT, um, just different effects, overlays, sound overlays, multiple layers. And so I'm getting close to about one minute for every minute of video on 1080p. If you go to 70, 720p, I get closer to 30 seconds for every minute of video. And if you go to 4K, multiply that by about three or four, so three or four minutes per minute of video on 4K. I'm sure it's a lot less if you have a lot of less features going on, and it probably could be more if you have more effects going on as well. So it's gonna really vary, 
but it's a very big step up for me from what I was used to, so I'm pretty happy with that as well. Now as far as issues I've ran across with it, I'd say there's uh, about four. Um, number one is I'm going to complain like everyone else, the port. If you give me an SD card reader, micro SD card reader, and a USB-A, I wouldn't have to use any dongles. Um, number two, I've had it crash one time on me where you get the spinny ball, had to do a hard reset. Number three, I've had it where there was a kind of a little notation from using a custom mask and it stayed on the screen, went on the desktop. I was very confused on what was going on there, why it couldn't get off, and I had to reopen it again and I'm able to recreate this one. And the fourth one is, and I've seen other people have this, I was doing a voiceover with my audio and the preview went, screen went black. I don't know why, but it did. And uh, the only way I could fix it was actually dragging the audio from that to a new layer or a new track, and it fixed it. So if you have this problem, see if that works for you. That's really all the issues I've had with it. So I've been very pleased since I've switched over from the Windows machine using uh, Sony Vegas Studio, and um, couldn't be really happier with what I have other than maybe the ports on it. So that's common complaint. Please make sure to comment below and I'd like to hear what your experience has been with Final Cut Pro. So please make sure to like this video, also subscribe. This has been Paul, the friendly reviewer for one month of daily use of Final Cut Pro X on the 2016 MacBook Pro. Thank you for watching.